Hi, welcome back to Transparent Academy. I am Rajiv Ramnath, your costing faculty, and in this video, we are going to discuss about process loss and its treatment in process costing. Let me take the example of a coffee powder manufacturer. Usually, when they introduce 1000 tons of coffee bean into the roasting process, they generally get 800 tons of roasted coffee bean. Now, there is a loss of 200 tons in this process. This 200 tons is called as the process loss. If this loss of 200 tons is expected, if this loss is inherent to the manufacturing process, we call it as normal loss. Anything over and above the normal loss is considered as abnormal loss. Let's look at another occasion. Here they are introducing 1000 tons but the output is only 750 tons. Here the total loss is 250 tons. In this 200 tons is considered as normal loss. The additional 50 tons is considered as abnormal loss. Let me summarize it. Normal loss is expected, it is inherent to the manufacturing process and it is unavoidable. Whereas abnormal loss is unexpected loss and usually controllable loss. Let's also look into another occasion. On this occasion, I am introducing 1000 tons and I am getting 840 tons of output. Now you see, my expected loss was 200 tons, but the actual loss is only 160 ton. So the difference of 40 ton is considered as abnormal gain. Now that we have understood what is normal loss, abnormal loss and abnormal gain in a process, let's proceed how it is treated in process costing. Now that we know normal loss is a loss inherent to the process, which means whether Mr. X undertakes the process or Mr. Y undertakes the process, both of them will have to suffer the normal loss. Let me explain the treatment of normal loss and abnormal loss in cost accounting with the help of an example. In this example, we are going to undertake a process where we are introducing 1000 units at a total process cost of 10,000 rupees. The normal loss of this process is 20 percentage. This means when we introduce 1000 units, our normal output is going to be only 800 units. This also implies a customer who wants to buy this 800 units will have to bear the cost of processing the 1000 units. This brings us to a conclusion. That is, the cost of normal loss should be borne by the normal output. In this example, the 800 units should bear the cost of processing 1000 units. So what about abnormal loss? Abnormal loss is an avoidable loss. It is a controllable loss. Can we pass on the abnormal loss to the customer? No, he will not be ready to bear it. Abnormal loss has to be borne by the manufacturer himself. Let's take the example of Mr. X and Mr. Y. X is introducing 1000 units. Y is also introducing 1000 units. The output of Mr. X is 800 units. Output of Mr. Y is only 500 units. There is a process loss of 200 units for Mr. X. The entire process loss is normal loss. For Y, the total process loss is 500 units where 200 units is normal loss and the additional 300 units is abnormal loss. Even though the output of Mr. X and Mr. Y is different, their average cost has to be the same. What should be the average cost? The process cost of 10,000 divided by the normal output of 800 units, the average cost should be 12.5 per unit for both the people. To this, they might add a profit of 5 rupees per unit 
both of them will be selling their output at 17.5 per unit. The only difference is Mr. X will be able to sell 800 units at 17.5 whereas Mr. Y will be able to sell only 500 units at 17.5. The remaining 300 units for Mr. Y is abnormal loss. So 300 units at the rate of 12.5 per unit a total of 3750 rupees is the abnormal loss for Mr. Y and as we learned earlier this loss has to be borne by the manufacturer. So this 3750 will be transferred to costing profit and loss account. Now let's think differently. What if Mr. Y is absorbing the cost of processing 1000 units among his 500 units of actual output. If that happens, his average cost will be 10,000 rupees divided by 500 units, 20 rupees per unit. He adds a profit of 5 rupees per unit and his selling price will be 25. Do you think anybody will buy a product which is available for 17.5 from Mr. X at 25 uh, rupees from Mr. Y? No, they won't. So we can easily come to a conclusion. Whenever there is an abnormal loss, that abnormal loss cannot be passed on to the customer. Rather, it has to be taken by the manufacturer. To summarize, normal loss can be absorbed by the normal output. Abnormal loss should be absorbed by the manufacturer. So, what about abnormal gain? Even in case of abnormal gain, the manufacturer need not pass on the gain to the customer. Let's understand that better with the example of Mr. Z who introduces 1000 units and gets a stunning output of 840 units. As you can see, there is a gain of 40 units. Now despite the fact that his actual output is 840 units, he will still continue to calculate the average cost by dividing the process cost of 10,000 rupees with the normal output of 800 units which means his average cost will continue to be 12.5 rupees and what about the abnormal gain of 500 rupees which is calculated by multiplying the 40 units of abnormal gain with the average cost of 12.5 rupees that will be transferred to costing profit and loss account by debiting the process account. To sum up, I want you to take note that the product that is being supplied to the customer is still having the same average cost of 12.5 rupees despite the gain. What does that imply? It means the abnormal gain is not passed on to the customer. The second thing you would have noted is the entire abnormal gain of 500 rupees in this example was transferred to the costing profit and loss of the manufacturer. So, the entire abnormal gain is enjoyed by the manufacturer. Before we conclude this topic, there is one more thing we need to learn about process loss. On many occasions, the units lost in the process can be sold for a scrap value. How do we treat this revenue? Let's take it one by one. The scrap value from sale of normal loss. Now, you all know the normal loss is an expected loss in the process. Hence, the revenue from normal loss is also an expected revenue for the process. That is very much part of the process and it goes on to reduce the total process cost. So, the scrap value from sale of normal loss will be credited to the process account. Moving on to scrap value from sale of abnormal loss. Abnormal loss is unexpected loss Revenue from sale of abnormal loss is also unexpected. So it is totally unrelated to the process. And what we do? We credit the sale of abnormal loss to the abnormal loss account. Similarly, there is an opportunity loss from sale of abnormal gain. This is also unrelated to the process. So the opportunity loss from sale of abnormal gain will be debited to the abnormal gain account. To summarize, the scrap value from sale of normal loss will be credited to the process account. The scrap value from sale of abnormal loss 
will be credited to the abnormal loss account and the opportunity scrap value from sale of abnormal gain will be debited to the abnormal gain account. Having understood the concept of process loss and the treatment of process loss, in the next video, we will learn how to prepare a process account which involves process loss. So, let's meet in the next video. Thank you. Signing off, Rajiv Ramnath.